Hello beautiful people, thank you for being here. This is like my fourth attempt at doing this video and podcast. The first time I had a sneezing fit, I'm full of cold so if it happens I'm just going to carry on so I hope that's okay. The second time I had a coughing fit, the third time the next door neighbour was mowing the lawn and the fourth time the doorbell rang so <coughs> here I am. Yay! So as I said thank you for being here. The subject for today is um, it's a strange one, but please bear with me and I do think you'll find it really, really interesting. My topic today is called contemplating death. And the reason I had this idea to do this today is because I had a hypnotherapy session a few days ago. My friend's a hypnotherapist and life coach and she offered to give me a session so to see what I would think. And it was really insightful because we did some inner child work, which is where you're in a very, very deep meditation and then you go to hypno state and you revisit your childhood. She asks certain questions and long story short, you, you sort of get told messages that may be holding you back in your life now um, and you just become aware of things that you're not normally aware of. So it reminded me that as a child, maybe five or six, I was petrified of, of dying and I used to cry myself to sleep every night because I was so scared of dying. And I don't really know where that came from, but that's what I used to do. So I just, it left me pondering it and I just thought I'd do an article on it and do some research and give you my thoughts and, opin and opinions on what I think of death and how we can live a better life today and going forward after you listening to this or watching this because what I'm about to tell you, the way I think now, it really changed my whole life. So death is one of the best teachers in our whole entire life and what I mean by that is, you know, it can teach you more than any person or situation ever can because someone can tell you that you are not your body but then death shows you or someone can tell you that all these um, people were the same, women, men, rich or poor and then death makes us all equal no matter what and, and you know you can cling to all these significant things, insignificant things sorry, in your life and you're clinging to them and they're so important to you and then death takes them away in a second. So are you going to wait for that last moment when death comes for it to be your teacher or are you going to take action now and live your life differently? So a wise person knows that death is available or you are facing death. It could happen at any time to anybody and it can happen in any place. So death is an in, is an inevitable part of life and it's it is going to happen but there's no point being scared of death or having negative feelings towards death ironically because death really is our friend I mean if you're really struggling with something in your life no matter how big or small then you know just think of death because death should challenge you to live your life at the highest level um you know, if you're out walking, how many times have you been out walking? Billions and billions of times, right? Okay, that's a lot of walking, actually, maybe more like thousands of times. How many times have you actually noticed the world? Or are you always in your head? I mean, if you knew you were going to die tomorrow, would you go on a walk and look at things differently? So, the people that you love, and the families that you have, and the friends and the relationships, <coughs> sorry, the friends and, and the relationships you have, do you take them for granted? Or do you not see them as much as you want to because you're working too much or you live away or, you know, but what if they died? Or what if you died, right? If an angel came down to you and said, right, straighten up your affairs because tomorrow and you're coming with me, the angel of death came and said, tomorrow you're coming with me, you have like a day left. How would you feel? And how would you interact with your loved ones knowing that tomorrow would be the last time you would see them? Like all the little grudges and complaints that you have with your family and friends, would that still be bothering you? Or would you just look at things like 
so differently like what would you do if that was the last time that you was going to spend with them but then now imagine living like that every day your whole entire life so imagine thinking that you could die at any minute because we can <coughs> I'm sorry and then Imagine how that would be like to be present with everybody you meet and to give so much love and how precious you would find that moment if you thought you was going to die at any minute, which is the reality of life, okay? So your life would be completely different if you lived this way. So death is not a morbid, t a morbid thought, even though society likes us to think it is, or our own opinions, because we've suffered with pain from when our family or friends have died close to us, it's actually, like I said, the, the our life's greatest teacher. And take a moment to just look at the things that you think you'll need in life, right? The things that you think you need. How much time and energy do you put into these things? And then what if you used to die within a week, or a day, or a month, right? How would... How would things change? What would your priorities change in life? Would you still be working a job that you really hate? Um, would you still be with your partner when you're just not compatible? Like, what would you do differently than you would have done the week before you got told you had like a week to live? And then, and then ponder this question. So, um, if that's really what you would do with your last week. All these things, if someone said to you, you've got a week to live and you say, I would do this, this and this. If that's what you would do, then what was you doing the whole time with your other weeks? Like, was you wasting time? Was you throwing it away? Was you just acting like life wasn't precious to you? And what are you doing with life? That is what death asks of you. So we'll go back to the death angel again. <coughs> excuse me, and you say that you're living, um, the death angel says to you, you know, you're coming with me now, you haven't got any more time, and then you're there saying, well, hold on a minute, I thought I had a week to, you know, live life to the fullest, I thought I had a week left to, to do the things I've wanted to do, and the angel of death would probably say, well, this year alone I gave you 52 weeks in just this year, so what have you been doing with those weeks? So it's just something to think about because it really is a reality that we could die at any point, but we don't really contemplate that. And then we just tend to live our lives without really appreciating what we have. I mean, like I keep saying, death is our greatest teacher. Anyone can die at any minute. So babies die, teenagers die, middle-aged people die. It happens to all of us, not just the, the aged and then no one knows when their time will be. That's the, I was going to say the scariest thought, but it's not really scary because why not be bold enough and open enough to live life like at any moment it could be taken away from you? So if you were to ask the question that truly awakened people, like spiritually awake or just people following their passion in life and living their life's purpose, they wouldn't change anything about their life because they're already living fully so imagine if um death was staring them in the face and the angel of death said okay it's time to go we're going now they would feel they wouldn't feel like they needed to go and do something or be somebody because they're already fulfilled in their life what they're doing at that time even if they still wanted to experience and appreciate life more because life is so amazing just being alive it's like have you ever had a moment where it's almost like a joke I remember, like, I don't know, you sat with your family and it's Christmas and all your loved ones are around you and you've had a lovely meal and you just look around and you just kind of think, you know what, if I was to die now, I'd die happy. Like, I'm sure we've all had those moments before. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure we've all had those moments before, but it's because you feel content and fulfilled. But imagine feeling like that, like, every single day of your life because we are always so close to death and I don't want to scare anybody or, or be morbid because it's not a morbid thing to think about. There's a story of a great yogi who um, used to imagine that someone, there was a big um, knife above him in a spider's web. Um, sorry, my phone's not on silent, but I'm not reading this video again, I'm sorry. <laughs> not again. Um, 
There was a big spider's web above his head with a knife following him around his whole life just to remind him, he had this vision of his life, just to remind him that he's so close to death at, at all the time. But you are also that close to death. And again, I'm, I'm not saying it to worry you or anything like that, but every time you get in the car, every time you cross the street, every time you eat something, you know, we all hear it. She died, um, she died eating a dinner or he died like in a car crash like two miles from his ha from his home or they died in a car in a plane crash on the way to New York right so anything that everything that you do in your life day to day like even me recording this video now someone has died doing this so every single thing can be taken from you in like one second <laughs> and you can leave you'll leave your loved ones behind um all of your possessions, your body, let me put this on silent, um, you would leave everything behind in literally like a second. So all your hopes and dreams for this lifetime will be taken away. So you need to ask yourself, everything changes in a flash, that's the reality, what would I do if I literally had one week to live or one month to live or one day to live or a year to live, okay? So what would you do with your life? And Whatever your answers are, do them. Why aren't you already doing them already? Um, everything can change in an instant. So the good thing about death is it teaches, that, teaches us that nothing in this whole entire world is, is real, really. Nothing is real or permanent. Everything is temporary. So whether that's the pain that you're going through right now, or whether that's a really uncomfortable situation, or whether that's a shit financial situation, or whether it's good times, you know, it's only temporary. So we can't cling to things or try and hurry things along. They're going to pass through life anyway. So it's how we take those experiences and live those experiences, looking at them for what they are, which is precious life moments, no matter what they are. It's like um, if you had an opportunity to go back and live your life a different way, would you? Or would you have liked to have the situation, circumstances and things that have happened to you for you to become this person that you already are? That's an also a really good question. And people think that, you know, if you, they get told they've been given a week to live, right? And you might think of all these things you want to do and all this money you're going to need to do it. But it's not what you're doing in your life. It's like how you're doing it. One of my um, favourite sayings is, and I know I literally have a favourite saying that's different every time I do these. So, you know, you know, um, is it's not how you do something. It's how you do everything that counts. And that's really deep within me because when I used to work with horses, even literally mucking out a stable, how I did that stable compared to if I was doing like a really important job, which I think is important because the horse needs a clean stable, right? But for saying if you're doing something really important in a really big business, like I would put as much energy and effort into doing a horse's stable than I would do something classed as really important because that's who I am. And it's not how you do something, it's how you do everything. And that makes life really simple and it also feels good from the inside. So going back to someone, say if they were in hospital and they had been given a few days to live, I'm sure the person would say to the doctor, oh my gosh, please can I just go and walk outside for one last time and look at the sky? Or if it was raining, they would say, can I just feel the rain on my skin like one last time? Which is that's just so magical for them to do that but then we don't like the rain we like moan look outside and say well I don't but look outside and say oh it's a miserable day and you run from the rain you cover up like <laughs> imagine you being told you had one day to live would you like dance in the rain or would you say how miserable a day it is and I know it can be hard to think of this because <clears throat> our life how we live it at the moment is so different to the simple life how we were born into but it just puts things into perspective we have so much going on but you get in your car and you drive from a to b but you're not even seeing things you're too busy thinking about what you're having for dinner or 
what's happening next week or next month or even next year. You're like, you're living in your head and you're not actually living. So a really nice book to read is called The Power of Now. And that really teaches us how to be in the present moment and enjoy everything, no matter whether it's a, a terrible experience that you're experiencing or a wonderful one or just a peaceful one. You know, we should learn to appreciate and accept and love every single moment that we're given because it is a gift. And if you um, lived life fully as if you were going to die tomorrow, then you'd be you'd feel so happy and fulfilled. You really would. But like, what is it that doesn't let us live our lives like we're scared of things we're scared of failure we're scared of looking silly um (coughs) excuse me we're scared of failure we're scared of looking silly we're scared of what he thinks or what she will think like let's let go of being scared and let's face the reality that death can come upon us at any point and let's just live more boldly and bravely and more openly and then you will just feel so fulfilled and so if death was to come upon you you wouldn't be regretting any, anything you've done or you wouldn't think you've wasted any time because you've lived life to the fullest as much as you can so live life fully is my um it's like you see all these instagram people you know living my best life kind of thing but everyone's life everyone's best life is different you should do what lights you up like if you are in a job that you hate why are you still there if you're with a if you're with a partner that you you know is not the one why because you're scared because you don't want to leave because you'd have to sort the house out or you think you're protecting the children or something so what you don't realize is this is kind of going more towards relationships now but you're Staying somewhere where you're not happy, you're teaching your children that being unhappy is okay just for the sake of someone else, even if it's them, if that makes sense. But if you left and followed the and you know went to chase the life of your dreams or what your heart's telling you, then you're teaching your children to be bold and to be brave and go after what you love and what makes you happy in life. And we should all do that. I've been in I was with someone who, my ex-fiance, who was the most nicest, loveliest guy. He did nothing wrong. He treated me like a princess. You know, but he wasn't the one for me. And it broke my heart into pieces telling him that. We were almost getting married. But it was right for me in here. And it's better off for him anyway in the long run. (coughs) Excuse me. But that took a lot of... I had to grow a massive pair of balls if I'm being honest and because it hurt me because I hurt him right but you can't go through life not doing what you want to do because you're scared or you're going to hurt other people just do what feels right in your heart follow your heart your heart is your intuition and your intuition leads you in life it gives you signs you know listen out for those signs and you won't go you really won't go wrong in life so what actually gives life meaning So we think of maybe cars, houses, big families, security and things, and they're all well and good. But like I said, death can take them away from you at any moment. So what actually gives life meaning is a willingness to live and experience life. So I used to be quite shallow. Um, I used to love like nice cars and big houses and money did impress me. I'm not going to lie, but now I've come on this personal journey including my spiritual journey I've realized that you don't I don't actually want any of those things anymore yes it's nice to have but it doesn't mean anything to me like if they all got took away from me by the way I have no car so I don't know why I'm making that like I have a nice car and a really big house um we should actually have my boyfriend's car um but if that was taken away from me it doesn't matter because what matters is I'm alive and I can look around this beautiful world that we've been given I mean how many different flowers does there want to actually be or how many different types of animals does there actually want to be on the world it's just like amazing like seriously you may think I'm talking woo woo but just look around you like is that just not amazing we're on this um we're on this ball of soil in the middle of absolutely nowhere spinning around like does it really matter like if you carry in a few extra pounds or 
what you're wearing or whether someone's going to be funny with you because you said something that you didn't like I mean come on just put everything into perspective right especially when you could die at like any minute it's like so, honestly so true so my challenge for you today is to challenge yourself so challenge yourself and realize and not even pretend because it's true challenge yourself as if you are living as if every day is your last and what would you do if every day was your last or every week was your last, what would you eat? Would you eat the cake or would you not eat the cake? Would you work more or would you work less? Like, what would you do? Because it all comes down to that. When you've been given that ultimatum, probably that's the wrong word to use, ultimatum. I think that's a choice of two. I don't know. When you've been given that um, news, for example, that you have got a week to live, like, whatever your mind comes up with is what you should do. But you need to be careful if you're very, if you do live in your ego a lot, like I used to, your mind will come up with, oh, I need to get this car or I need to, you know, buy this or do that. Oh, that's all well and good. But just, just stop for a minute and just appreciate like what life actually is. It's experiencing things because we can't control life. No matter how much we try, we spend our whole lives trying to control the next thing in our lives that we want to go right. But once we surrender and let go and there's nothing we can actually control, nothing, all we control is all we can control is our thoughts and even that's difficult. Just let it be. Like there's that um song, K Sera Sera, whatever will be will be. I think it's French. And it's true because you've got two choices. You can either carry on fighting, it's like body image and dieting. You can either carry on fighting with yourself and not get anywhere or just surrender and let go to what is and make a plan to move forward or just accept it and just live through that and it's so simple when you think about it it's just not easy but the thing is life exists without you okay it's not nice to hear but life goes on life has been existing for like millions billions of years and we simply get the honor to experience like one piece of life because we we get we're born and then we die. And we have this tiny slice of life in the middle for us to do what we want with. And that's it for this lifetime. Because I believe that um, our soul doesn't just die with our bodies. I believe we, we go on to do something else. I'm not sure what. No one will ever know. Um, but either way, whatever your beliefs are, for this lifetime, that's it. You've had this little slice of, li slice of life to experience. So imagine if we was never going to die, then you wouldn't value your life or your time at all. You would probably just waste it because you'd think that you'd always have it. And it's scarcity that makes life precious. So death actually gives meaning to life. Like I said, if you weren't ever going to die, like Twilight the Vampires, then you'd feel so... you wouldn't really care as much it wouldn't mean so much to you because you, you it's never going to be taken away from you why is that still making a noise when um so death is your friend okay and death is your liberator and do not be afraid of death so take each moment of your life and live it fully and the only reason that we fear death is because we crave life so why not live the wise person knows that death is constantly giving them something, death is giving them meaning to their life. And if you're experiencing life fully, then death doesn't take anything away from you because you're already fulfilled. And the wise being is is okay to die at any point because there's nothing that they would do in their heart that they're not they've not they're not doing every day because they're just happy and content with their life so if it gets taken away from them at any point then that's okay I hope this like makes sense I know it's quite deep but it, it you know it really me oh my gosh I'm sorry it really means a lot to me <clears throat> so day, death has made you a great promise I believe the promise like I said before that everything is temporary so in the end everything belongs to death okay so death is a landlord and you're the tenant so it depends what you do if you're the tenant of the house what you do with that house until death says right time's up you've got to go out because scarcity makes life precious so 
that's the reality of things. We're all going to die. So why not live life like you're going to die? You know, when you hear someone dies close to you or a friend's friends or whatever, it makes you just stop for a minute and just think, wow, like, that's so sad. But then we probably change for one day and we feel more grateful for things and we hold our loved, one, our loved ones a little bit tighter at night but why don't do that all the time how much happier would you be in your life if you thought you was going to die tomorrow okay so my message to you is live your life every day as if it's your last what would you do if you was given a week a day a month a year to live and do that and just love so much. Imagine if the person you saw today, tonight, would be the last person you'd ever see because you're going to die tomorrow. Like, how much time and energy and attention would you give that person? You wouldn't even care what they were saying. You'd just want to experience and take it all in and, and see and smell and touch everything if you know it's going to be your last moment. So just try and live your life that way and just see how different and how special and precious your life actually is so I hope I got the message across I hope you understand um sorry for my cough sorry for my pinging in my um, phone and thank you for listening everybody and thank you for watching and as always people go out and shine because you are enough exactly the way you are and you really can have be and do anything you want in life, you've just got to go out there and do it. So live your best life, guys, okay?